Hey there guys, Buttery Butters here, bringing you my first actual Q&A video. The first one was just me asking you guys to give me questions. In this video, I'll be answering the questions you guys gave me last week. Remember, in the comments below, leave any and all questions you may want to ask me for next week, and on Sunday, I'll release another Q&A episode. So, you have today all the way up through Saturday to ask me questions. So, without further ado, let's get this started. Let's go with, um, first is Edward the Guy asked, Why did you start YouTube? This is a loaded question. But it's a relatively simple answer, if I can learn how to speak good. There are a number of factors of why I started YouTube. Um, I was inspired by how much fun a lot of other YouTubers were having when they were making their videos. I love playing video games, I love talking, and I also like to teach people how to do stuff. I thought it would be a great idea to combine all of those, and plus, some other YouTubers did inspire me. Chugga Conroy, for one, he's a huge inspiration. Um, Gassy Mexican, SSOHPKC, those two also big ones. Keikos or Yaks, even though he doesn't do stuff now anymore, I don't think. He was a big one. Also, another reason I started is because I had a lot of public speaking issues and poor diction, and I was generally very shy, and I kind of found YouTube to be kind of a training platform for that, and it worked out well. It uh, allowed me to go up to complete strangers and talk to them without feeling self conscious. I'm not shy in front of other people as much as I was before, definitely. It's really helped me grow socially as well, so that's another reason. But really the main reason I started is because it seemed fun, and it still is, so. There's really no other reason to do this other than fun. I mean, it's great to train myself to be a little bit more social, it's great to be able to talk and play about video games, it's great to be inspired by people, but it needs to be fun, and it's it is, which is why I keep doing it. I love it. Modern Warfare Games, MW Games, has two questions for me. One, why did I choose my username? And two, why did I partner with Freedom? Hang on. Sorry, I had to clear my throat. And technically, I'm not with Freedom. I'm with uh, VEVX, which is a Freedom sub-network, sub but... Splitting hairs. Anyway, I'm going to go with my username first. It comes from an old nickname I had in school, where... You still got recess instead of study hall. Fucking American school systems. Anyway, in recess we were allowed to play certain sports, and one of them was um, pavement football, which basically is no contact football. And I couldn't catch to save my life. I was a great corner, but I couldn't catch. So, and every single person in my school was kind of lazy. So instead of calling me Butterfingers like they wanted to, they just abbreviated it to Butters. And lo and behold, two weeks later, South Park releases the new character of Butters, and I look just like him, and the name stuck. The second half actually comes from a very dear friend of mine in Canada named Michelle and her sister Laura. I'm not sure how they started calling me it, but they started calling me Buttery. I don't know why, they just did, it became my Skype name, and now it's my YouTube username, so... Kind of an homage to two of my best friends right there. Thank you, Michelle and Laura, for helping me choose my YouTube username. Now, so why I partnered with Freedom? There are a couple reasons. One, I wanted to be partnered with the network because it's just better for my channel. To It looks better. Uh, one of them is also because of the very strong community that Freedom has. I really like when the people on the network aren't competing with each other. They're there to help each other out and give feedback, whether negative or positive, which I really like. It's a very strong community. Everyone's friendly, helpful. People have a great sense of humor. It's a nurturing atmosphere, which I love. My old channel was um, on broadband TV, and there was no visible, like, good community. If you wanted anything from anyone, you had to fill out a support ticket, and then it got transferred and routed everywhere. It was kind of a mess, honestly. I mean, broadband TV is probably better for um, getting your channel out there because they've got a much larger network than Freedom, but I do like the increased uh, freedom that comes with having such a strong community. And it's also a perfect place to start for a smaller channel since Freedom has pretty low view requirements. I think the view requirements for uh, um, Freedom is, I think, a thousand... Not a thousand. I think it was more like 500 a month or something. I'm not sure, but I was actually approached by uh, VEVX because of consistent uploads and consistency. So that's another thing they look for is they want you to be consistent with your content. So, again, it's not hard to get into Freedom, but they do help. It is a... Uh, pretty damn good network. And, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. And it's, again, as I said, it's a perfect uh, place for a smaller channel. I started f with Freedom 
just over two weeks ago at 47 subscribers. I'm now at 73, and that's pretty good. And I haven't actively been advertising my channel on their forums. I mean, I've sort of just talked around, asked a few people to check me out, and 26 subscribers in just over two weeks, about 13 a week, that's an incredible rate for me. If I keep it at 13 a week for a full year, uh, let me do a calculator on my computer right here. So there are 36 weeks in here? No. 364 days divided by 7 equals uh, 52 weeks and uh, multiply that by 13. That's 676 in a year. If I keep up the rate of 13 a week, that's 376 subscribers, which is more than I've ever had. And keep in mind, more subscribers means more people will search your videos, which means the growth could become more exponential after that, which is something I kind of hope happens. I would like to have my videos reach a larger audience, simply because I, well, it made me feel good. <laughs> and, uh, what else? I think that was it, actually. Well, again, having all community-driven, uh, like, help as well. I mean, a lot of my graphic designs for Pokemon came from... Uh, the Freedom Forms from people that helped me out. Uh, one of them's working on a thumbnail for Grandia for me already. Um, just general stuff. I mean, there's music that you can use because they've um, partnered certain musicians. Uh, for example, my outro that you're going to hear, uh, that music has been um, is given free of use for all Freedom Partners because the uh, musicians are partnered with Freedom, so that's fantastic. I love that. So It's a great community, and Considering the fact that they don't buy licenses and, like, they don't, like, require you to be connected to AdSense, they're a pretty damn commu uh, good community and a great network to have, so smaller channels should definitely take a look at Freedom because it may only just be starting, but it's already the 30th ranked network on Social Blade, but Social Blade does take a while to update, so, update, so. who knows, maybe in the next week or two it'll jump to 28 or so. There is some pretty stiff competition on the way, though. And, um, Rise Attacks asked me, who's my favorite general sports figure? I also personally want to thank Rise Attacks for giving me that shout-out. I already thanked you via comment, but it feels good to actually say thank you for the shout-out. And this is a tough question, since I really enjoy uh, baseball, football, golf, and hockey, so there's a wide pool of people to choose from. So I listed a couple here. There's uh, three of them that didn't quite make the cut, but that could have made the cut. And I'm going to go with them right now. First is Jackie Robinson. If you don't know his name, then you don't know baseball, pretty much. Or you just don't know a lot about baseball's history. He's possibly the most famous man to ever break the color barrier in baseball. He was technically the first player signed by a white club, but uh, Larry Doby was actually the first to play a game because he was also one of the people that was looked at by certain general managers to try to broaden baseball out. He was actually um, signed by the general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers because the uh, manager of the Brooklyn Dodger Dodgers felt he couldn't in good faith separate blacks and whites from playing baseball when blacks worked so hard in World War II. So that's one of the reasons why Jackie Robinson got signed in the first place, which is great. He hasn't done much since leaving the game, though, which is why he's only an honorable mention, though. He hasn't done much outside the game. Next is Wayne Krebet. Uh, if, you're not, if you're a Jets fan and you don't know him, read up in your history, please. <laughs> he was an undrafted free agent, and he had a stellar career as a slot receiver with the New York Jets before his career ended with a concussion. I saw the hit that led to that. It was brutal. He got hit out of bounds and sort of flipped midair, landing he with the back of his head on the turf. It was, it was a nightmare. If he had had better stats and had done more outside of his playing career, then he would be higher up on this list, but... He gets the mention simply because of how much he did as an undrafted free agent in slot, because he's considered one of the best Jets receivers to ever play the game, and that's very high praise. Next is Lula Amarillo, and he honestly almost made the top spot. He's had an outstanding tenure as the GM of the New Jersey Devils. He, he's the one who pushed to get Scott Stevens as compensation when the St. Louis Blues signed Brandon Shanahan in 94. I think it was 94. But yeah, if he didn't do that, then a Hall of Fame defenseman doesn't come to the Devils. He was a key part of our cup runs. He also picked Marty Berdour about five spots before anyone else would have. One spot after Grant Fuhr, I think it was. Yeah, he picked Marty five spots before anyone else would have, and it was a genius move. He's the best in the, who's ever played the game. Not the best person in life, though. I will freely admit that as a Devils fan. And... Just a few years ago, two years ago, in fact, he got an elite caliber goalie in Corey Schneider for just the ninth overall pick in the draft. 
and if they tried getting him in conference, anyone else within the conference, that would have cost at least two first round picks plus a player. And the, the fact that the Devils got him for only the ninth pick when there was not a good goalie prospect in that draft, I mean, Zach for call, he's okay, but they got an elite goalie in the prime of his career to back up, not back up, but you know, take over for Marty Brodeur for just the ninth overall pick in the draft. I consider that one of the best steals Lou Lamarillo has ever made. However, his inability to keep up with the times and the trends of hockey, inability to pick up decent profile offensive players in the draft instead uh, still choosing to build through defense and two-way play uh, you can tell it's actually starting to really cost the Devils since the Devils are struggling to score goals they're still one of the best defensive teams in the entire league they just can't score enough and that's been evidenced the past uh, four years where our best run was in the where we squeaked into the playoffs and kind of just got crushed by the Kings I didn't get crushed by the Kings. We made it a series, but... Uh, if the Jets had had... Not the Jets. The Devils have had be better success recently. I would have definitely put Lamarillo on the top of this list. But the Devils' recent struggles in recent years... That's the reason he doesn't make this. And finally... Wow, this has actually gone on longer than I thought. Jesus, I'm at 12 minutes now. The winner of this particular question is John Madden. And not the football one. God damn, I hate that guy. John Madden was a center for the New Jersey Devils, Blackhawks, Wild, and Panthers. Was an, he was an undrafted free agent, and he had to fight tooth and nail to get into the NHL. He grew up, in, um, he grew up poor in a very small neighborhood in Toronto, and he, when he was playing juniors, he instead chose to go to the NCAA on a scholarship, as opposed to playing for Nigeria Falls of the OHL. So he chose education before hockey, which is kind of unprecedented. And even though he had great seasons in both juniors and college, he wasn't drafted for some reason. However, one of the players who he played with, I think it was Brandon Morrison, he played with in college, and uh, his work ethic was noticed by Lou Lamarillo, and Lamarillo signed him as a undrafted college free agent, which was really smart. He's con still considered to be one of the best defensive forwards to play the game in recent memory. He won the Selkie back in 01, and he was instrumental in both of the Devil's Cup runs. He actually scored a hat-trick against the Rangers, where he got two of those goals shorthanded, which is still tied for an NHL record for shorthanded goals in the playoffs. He also tied um, the rookie and, uh, I think, history uh, shorthanded goals in one season with six, which was incredible. He uh, won his last cup with the Chicago Blackhawks, and then he went to play for the Wild for a bit. And the Panthers, and now he's an assistant coach with the Panthers. And he's an incredibly smart player. If he doesn't become a head coach within the next five years, I will be incredibly surprised. I have nothing but the utmost respect for John Madden. It shows that no matter your circumstances or your shortcomings, as long as you work hard, you can get shit done. Which is why I respect that man so much. And anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my first Q&A. It ran a little bit long because I gave some rather lengthy answers to some simple questions. I could have just said, oh, my favorite is John Madden because he was undrafted and was a great defensive player. I could have just said, oh, my username is just a mix of my nickname from my fandom, nickname from school. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the super long-winded answers. And remember, if you want to see uh, more Q&As, just by all means, throw as many questions as you want in the bottom. Uh, they sh probably won't run as long in the future. I just felt the need to extend this as long as possible since I didn't get that many questions this time. I'm hoping for a better turnout next week, guys. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, take care.